He fell asleep in New Jersey Before the bombs hit the ground Broadcasting from a bomb shelter He is the nuclear, nuclear clown. clown There is a ton of, of absolute hate for uh, Jonah Hex, which is what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, it got 14% on Rotten Tomatoes. Now, when I look for a movie, I use the uh, Flickster program for uh, on iPhone, and uh, it brings up my theater and, and what's playing and stuff like that. And it also has, in the corner, it has the Rotten Tomatoes rating of whatever movie I'm looking at. So I can't help but see what, you know, the percentage is. And uh, Jonah Hex uh, had a 14%. It's fucking bad. That's bad. That's that's really bad. Uh, so I went into Jonah Hex and I was not expecting hardly anything at all. The The runtime on this movie is an hour and 21 minutes. It's pretty short. I mean, normally with superhero type... Well, a uh, superhero, you know, he's not really a superhero, but, you know, comic book stuff. Uh, normally with movies like this, you have to fit in the origin story uh, plus a villain so you know normally movies like this the first one uh, is over two hours or at least two hours you know maybe two hours 15 minutes to anywhere to up to two and a half hours uh, just to kind of establish a story because they got a lot to do with uh, origin stories and whatnot so uh, I was really shocked when I saw that this movie was only an hour and 21 minutes wow that's that's pretty brief uh, so I went in and I was not expecting anything. And I gotta tell you, maybe I'm getting soft in my old age, but uh, I really thought Jonah Hex was uh, was a perfectly uh, capable movie. It was perfectly fine with me. It wasn't uh, a, a brilliant masterpiece by any means, but I thought it, uh, it it went in, it told its story, and it went home rather briefly. And, and hey, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean... You could say it's formulaic, you could say it's uh, it's uninspired, but I don't have a problem with formulaic if the formula's good. And normally I'm the movie bastard, like, I, I hated Dark Knight. I thought No Country for Old Men was fucking boring and, 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 and just stupid, and I really didn't like it at all. Um, and, and I was really disappointed in it because I had heard, you know, these unbelievable things about it, and I finally see it, and I thought it was a piece of shit. So, so normally I'm the one who like craps on everything, uh, or at least in my experience, you know, I, I'm really not, uh, I don't think I'm a movie snob or anything like that, but, uh, surprisingly, I, I liked Jonah Hex. I did. I liked it. Were the characters kind of cardboard cutouts? Sure. Was there a lot of deep penetrating character backgrounds? Well, no, not really. But, uh. In a movie that's an hour and 21 minutes, do you need it? I mean, was it really missed? Uh, uh, for me, I thought that uh, it was a perfectly serviceable movie. Um, there were parts in it that were a little bit uh, silly. Um, but overall, I liked it. I thought Jonah Hex was, 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 uh, was, was fun. It was, uh, and it was, it was brief. And, and I really have a problem with movies taking on this whole epic scale and now movies are you know two and a half hours two two hours 45 minutes and they don't need to be you know um a, a good example is the harry potter movies uh the the movies get longer and longer and the the, the last movie is split into two parts like if you can't tell me a story in seven fucking two and a half hour movies i don't want to hear your story i mean the there's a difference between epic and just hacking on runtime to make something seem epic. Lord of the Rings, I am talking directly to you. Uh, so, so when I see a movie that's an hour and 21 minutes, I think, is this a fucking commercial or something? I mean, that, it's, it's unheard of. Even now, comedies, I think, are too long. Uh, a two-hour comedy, is there really a need for that? I mean... The, I think an hour and a half is the perfect time to to tell your story and 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 not overstay your welcome, which uh, I think a lot of movies do. They try to outsmart themselves or cover up crappy plot writing or plot holes by making it longer and making it more complicated to fool you into into forgetting that you're watching a piece of garbage. And 
Jonah Hex is uh, incredibly simple, incredibly straightforward, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I mean, uh, the di the director is not trying to outsmart you and say, you know, oh, this is a multi-layered storyline with deep themes and and, 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 and and you know, taking on social issues. Nothing like that. It's a fucking movie, and it's fun. And, you know, you sit there and you say, oh, well, there you go. It's a, it's, it's a movie. Uh, it's an hour and a half... I have uh, very little complaints if you can give me a movie in an hour and a half that's not total shit. Um, so that's my spoiler-free review. My spoiler review, um, uh, there, there are some silly parts, like I said. You know, two Gatling guns on a horse. It's fucking stupid. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's uh, what really cracked me up was... Uh, th this is actually the first movie I've ever seen Megan Fox in because I, I didn't watch Transformers, either of them, because I know better. I know better than that. Like, I I'm trying to hold on to one small shred of my childhood and not watch it just to be, you know, uh, uh, totally desecrated. So I, I didn't watch Transformers 1 or the fucking sequel. Uh, but, so, so this is my first time I've ever seen a Megan Fox movie. And it's funny because, you know, she plays a, a, a whore, and uh, the first time we see her, a guy she's with is like, Oh, run away with me, I'll leave my uh, my wife and my family and my kids, and together we will be, we'll be together, and we'll have a farm, and we'll raise corn, and, and I'll slather butter on the corn, and I'll slather the corn all over your body. Well, he didn't exactly say that, but he meant it with his eyes. And, you know, Megan Fox is like, oh, well, you know, we had a business arrangement and it, he, he, you know, it's business, it's business, this, you know, uh, go, go now. I know you want me. He, he, he. So he leaves. And then like five minutes later, Jonah Hex comes with his face all fucked up. And she's like, run away with me, Jonah. We can leave. <laughs> Like this guy, and he's got his, you know, like she just got done telling the telling this guy who's like, "Come on, let's get married." No, no, I can't do it. This is business. But Jonah comes along, and she's like, "Oh, take me." Stupid. Um, but you know, whatever. And uh, John Malkovich was the bad guy, and I thought he did a, uh, you know, f uh, a good enough job with it. Uh, but one thing that I think bears very special mention, uh, something that. Movies seem to forget. Uh, John Malkovich's character, Quentin Turnbull, I think his name was, had a a, a henchman. He had a henchman, uh, this the, the, this Irish character uh, with some tattoos on his on his jaw and stuff like that. And man, it it really I loved that because movies now they they, they forget that the 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 art of the henchman. And the art of the villain. And it's nice to see somebody just take it back to basics. Jonah, this movie is incredibly basic. It's just basic storytelling. And it's fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. Um, you know, the, uh, the bad guy has his henchman. And then Jonah has to go through the henchman to get to the bad guy. And it's 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 classic. It's, uh, it, it, it's just storytelling 101, you know, and, and uh, uh, so many movies just skip that very simple, comfortable, vital part, and it shows in their shitty movies. And and again, you know, I'm not saying Jonah Hex is, is a great movie or one of my favorite movies, but I liked it. I thought it was fine. Um, another thing that was a little silly, though, was uh, he can he can touch a, a core, he could touch a dead body. And then talk with it, you know, to get information or, you know, whatever. And uh, when, when he thinks, he, he, his whole plot is to go after, you know, the guy who killed his family and get his his Western vengeance on him. So he goes all around the West and he's looking for him. And then it turns out he, he died, the, the, the villain dies in like a hotel fire. So it robs Jonah of his vengeance. So he becomes a bounty hunter and, you know, and does his thing. And then, like, later on in the movie, he finds out that the guy's still alive, which sends him on his whole quest in the movie, which is, which is fine. But if you can talk to dead people, wouldn't you kind of, like, make sure that the guy was dead or at least go try to find him? It was kind of like, oh, he burned in a hotel fire. Oh, he did? Oh, well, shit. I guess I'll become a, I guess I'll become a bounty hunter then. Uh, and then, like, later on, he goes and he digs up the guy's son, 
and talks to him and his son's like, yeah, well, he's still alive and, you know, here's where he is and this and the other thing. Well, if you would have done that before, just to kind of double check, I don't know, you know, check your sources that he's actually dead, then, you know, maybe you could have got your revenge sooner. I think it, it, it's a good movie. It tells its story and it leaves, which is a, a tremendous thing nowadays when, 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 when movies just go on and on and on and they can't wrap it up they can't you know they don't know when to stop and uh i I think that jonah hex is is the perfect example of a movie that uh, goes in tells its story and leaves uh uh, like this i'm gonna tell i'm gonna come here i'm gonna sit down i'm gonna give you my review and then boom i'm out of here